Hello YouTubers, my name is Attila Mate from Blue Sky Photography and today I would like to talk to you about the basics of photography. Now there are a few things in photography which are really critically important and I think that many, everybody who wants to learn photography they should know these things. Now there are a few uh, critically important and there are a few not really important but still which will improve your photography a lot. Let's discuss a little bit about these topics. Uh, what are these critically important things which will make a difference in your photography? Now, first of all, you have to understand exposure. What is exposure in a camera? You know, what is, uh, I'm really sorry, I will chimp down on my phone because I made some notes, so I don't uh, want to miss anything from here. I'm sorry about that. Now, the exposure, what is exposure? Exposure is about aperture, shutter speed and ISO. These three things combined together will take will make the exposure. The exposure of the image, it means the image will be uh, lighter, brighter or darker. Now, whichever you want to obtain, you can control by these three things, the aperture, the shutter speed and the ISO. Now, I don't want to talk about the shutter speed and the aperture and the ISO's effect in your photos because this video will be too long. And I would like to talk about these three like exposure and why exposure is important in your photography. Because if you underexpose an image, the image will be too dark, you know, and then you, it's not pleasing to the eye. If you overexpose the image, again, it's too, it's too bright and some uh, parts of the image will be blown out. You don't have any details in it. So it means that it's not pleasant to your eye. In my opinion and my experience, the best is what I do anyway. I underexpose a little bit, like only a half stop or maybe one stop. I underexpose my images because from shadows, it will be much easier to bring it back in post-processing. But if you overexpose your images and something is blown out, it is much more difficult to bring back the blown out highlights. So that's why I tend to underexpose a little bit my images, but that is completely up to your taste. So if you think that underexposing is not good, you have to overexpose them. Or if you think that the right thing is to rightly expose, you know, and that's it, that's it, you know, it's completely up to your taste. But it is critically important to expose in such a way that to be pleasant to your eye, to the viewer's eye. When somebody looks at the photo, should be pleasant to look at the photo. Now, the second thing after the exposure, what is very, very important to understand is the light and its effect. Light manipulation and its effect. Now, if you look in my channel, if you don't know about these things and you want to learn and you look in my channel, you will find videos about the aperture, about shutter speed, ISO, how to manipulate the light and these kind of things. If you want to learn, please look in my, uh, in my playlists and you will find the playlist uh, Advance Your Photography or Learn Photography and then you will find these videos over there. Light and its effect is really important again because everything about in photography is about light. You have to manipulate the light in such a way to obtain great results and the results you want to obtain. Now it's up to you again what you want to do, it's up to you how do you want to do it but at the end of the day, you have to know how to manipulate the light to obtain that effect what you want. And this is really, really important. This is critical again. So until now is the exposure and the light and light manipulation. Now, the third thing which is really important again, and it will make a very, very big difference in your photography, and that is composition. How to compose your photos. Now, if you didn't learn photography, if you are only a self-learner uh, or something like that, that's completely fine. You can learn, a, you learn like that, that's not a problem. I didn't. I started a course and I did a few courses and that's how I learned. That is the quickest way. If you learn yourself, it is possible. And there are many famous photographers who never did a photography course. They did, they did learn themselves. But that is the longer way. So if you want to get... Uh, faster, you know, to the point where you are good in photography, you have to take a course or something, or you have to put very big effect in, in learning. Now, composition is critical, you know, if you want to increase the artistic values of your photos. And I will discuss these rules, these few rules, you know, what, what is, is very important uh, a little bit later on. Now, composition 
in the first place. If you have a greatly exposed image, if you have a very sharp image, in focus, everything is right, but it's badly composed, that image won't be good at all. I think, in my opinion, that composition is as important as uh, the example, the exposure or the sharpness of the image or these kind of things, it is as important. So you have to know how to compose your images, you have to learn about it. Again, if you want to learn about this, you find video in my channel about this. Now, don't be afraid to try new angles and new uh, viewpoints, you know, in your images. Now, many times when I'm out shooting portraits, you know, I'm thinking, oh, what should I do now? How how it will be better, you know, how it would be better. I know my usual ways to do, but I always try to shoot from different angles, from different positions, and also try some different poses, because that's how you learn. And if you get a new pose, if you, if you, or if you have a very good pose, you bring that further. You try from there, you take it, and you bring it further. And that's how you learn a lot. So you have to be very, very um, uh, intuitive and don't be afraid to try new things and don't be afraid to, uh, to try new angles. Now, okay, there are some basic rules, like I said, which need to be kept in, in photography if you want good photography. Now, don't get me wrong, there are some people and they, they will say, they will, they will have horrible uh, composition, you know, in their photos and they call it art. They say, oh, this is art. I think that they don't know photography and then they call their work art. Sometimes I'm, I'm looking at photos and I say, where was this guy's mind, you know, like when he, when he did this photo? And if you ask him, he say, oh, this is art. This is my point of view. This is art. Yeah, you don't know anything about photography. That's it. So you should learn. But they don't want to do that. So anyway, uh, let's get to these rules now. The first rule is the rule of thirds. Now, this is usually when you do portraits or any subject you have in your photos. It is, the rule of thirds is that you, you, um, uh, you divide your photos in three different areas, actually in nine areas. You have two lines like that and two lines like that. I will put a picture up here on the screen so you see what I'm talking about. Now, the most important in rule of thirds that your subject should be on the first line or on the second line, you know, on, in the photo, not in the middle. There are possibilities where you put in the middle and I have as well, but then the photo only when it's very, very close up, you know, so you go like head and shoulders, then you can put in the middle, you know, or, or if you have a face or, or if you have a baby and you want to just place very tight, you know, and the shot is very tight and you want to place in the middle, that's completely fine. But if you have a larger environment of portrait, rule of thirds is really important. Now, the second rule is uh, if there is a need, there is a feed. Now, again, I don't really see on YouTube talking about these things, you know, and I, I, I see many times people doing these kind of photos and it really doesn't look really good. So you have to try this. This is an unwritten rule that if your knee is visible, if the subject's knee is visible in the photo, you have to do a full length portrait then. So you have to include the feet as well. So if you go under the knee, you have to include the feet as well. So it has to be a full length. You have to come above the knee, up, to be good, to look good. Now, again, it's up to you. If you like it, I don't really care. That's a general unwritten rule that if there is a knee, there is a feet. So try it. Make two photos the same scenario and you will see that I'm right. It looks much better if there is a feet as well. Now, the third one is uh, always look into the photo. Now, a few days ago I saw a photo, you know, and I, I was thinking what the guy is thinking about this, you know, I mean, and they call it again, oh, that's art, that's my point of view, yeah. Uh, that's ridiculous, I tell you. Now. Uh, what is what I mean when I say always look into the photo? I explain with my phone because it will be much easier. So you have the rule of thirds. Yeah, you have one line here, one line here. You place your subject here or here. You don't place in the middle. Now, if you place your subject over here, your subject has to look into the photo all the time, not out of the photo. So if you place on this side, your subject look that way. If you place on this side, your subject will look that way, not out of the photo. That's what I mean when I say you have to look into the photo, not out of the photo. This is critically important. If the subject is looking out of the photo, it's really, really weird. 
and you can do it yourself on a, a test and you will see that I'm absolutely right. Now, the fourth one is, and this is again very important, and uh, believe me, if you look to most uh, famous portraits, and I'm talking about portraits now, uh, mostly, if you look at most famous portraits, you will see that they are very simple. So this rule is simplify. Simplify as much as possible. Don't place a lot of things in your background because the attention has to be on your subject. So the that, that's why we want separation. That's why we want uh, thin depth of field. So in the back, uh, everything is, is blurred out. So you, don't, you can't see anything, you know, to, 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 to focus your attention on your subject. And simplify, this, is, this rule is really important. Try to find a place where in the background there is not too much detail and bring your subject over there and have the shot, blur out the background and then bring at a space where, at a, at a place where, uh, where the background is full of details, you know, and that it, it will drag the attention everywhere, but not on your subject. So this is again something which is, which is very important. Try it out and you will see that I'm right. Simplify. Now, most importantly, what is very, very important in photography, exercise, exercise and exercise. All these tips I gave you, it is only worth if you exercise. You have to exercise to, to learn more and more and more. You have to go out and shoot. And that's how you learn. Now, if you want to, to keep these tips, you know, it's okay. If you think that it's useless, it's, almost, it's also okay, you know. I just would like to help those people who want to learn photography. If you want to add something to these tips, feel free and leave a comment down below. Maybe you have a good tip as well. I can learn as well. I'm only a human being, so I'm also uh, learning, you know. There's a saying that we learn until die, you know, and we still die stupid. So don't forget that, you know. <laughs> anyway, so uh, if you like this video, please like and subscribe and uh, share my videos. If you would like to support this channel, feel free and hit the thumbs up and share my videos and other than that i wish you a great day and i'll see you in the next one take care guys